Mr. Jordan, can I ask you straight, as a former owner, tapping up, is it the rule that nobody in football really adheres to? Yeah, because it's bloody stupid. Did you ever tap anyone up? Yeah. <gasps> Did I speak to people that were employed by other football clubs? Yeah. And does everybody it's do It's against it? the rules. Well, it's a silly rule. But, the, 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 but it's yeah. against the rules. It's against the... It is, it is against the rules, absolutely. What, for, for everybody listening this morning, for those who don't know, what is tapping up? When you approach, without permission, another club's asset, whether that be a player or a manager, I never did it to a player, never never, never went to a player that was under contract um, to a club... And, it was a manager you tried yeah, to get? absolutely. Under the noses of the other club? Just asked him to have a conversation. Without I, their permission? I could, have, I could have met him in a pub, I could have bumped into him anywhere and gone to him, oh, hello, mate, how are you? Listen, by the way... I want to talk to you, and that would have been considered tapping up, right? Because this is a ridiculous law. But you're it, admitting this morning to have done it. Well, every because I think it's a stupid construct of an immature industry that still talks about our players are paid on a weekly basis. It is no no other industry says that you can't talk to another person's employee. It's a silly. So Lloyd's Bank would say to Barclays Bank, "We're going to put a clause in our contract that you cannot talk to our manager." No, you wouldn't. You'd have to accept the fellow. Have to pay his notice and walk out the door. And what football does is they have a compensation culture. What other industry? If you're late for work here, do they find your wages? No, they do in football. It, actually, you have to look at the legality of some of this. If football players wanted to challenge the clubs that deduct their wages from, from the fact they've turned up late for work, they probably wouldn't stand up in court. Well, you see, it's, the, the reason we're talking about this this morning is that this is everywhere. It's about Dan Ashworth at Newcastle United, who Manchester United want... Uh, as we know, it's been reported that Newcastle Sporting Director Dan Ashworth had sent an email in February to Omar Barada, the incoming chief executive at Manchester United, in which he made it clear he wanted to accept the offer of the same role at Old Trafford. But the problem was Ashworth sent a blind copy to his Newcastle email address before apparently realising the error before deleting the evidence. <laughs> So that's the last thing he wanted to do is like press send. Oh God, I've sent it to them. Well, it's the last thing he wanted. Someone's got no attention to detail as well. Right. My current my current employer. The problem also was hadn't been given permission. That Omar Barada is the incoming chief executive at Manchester United. Yes, that works. Yeah. And he also shouldn't be engaging in all of this because he too is on gardening leave, know, set but... up by Manchester City, his previous employer. Yeah. So he's talking to him, and him's talking to him. But neither should be talking to each other. But it just shows you how unrealistic and, unre and, 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 and uncommercial it really is. How are you going to really legitimately police people? How are you going to do it? The only way you're policing this is because Dan Ashworth... Well, is you so can police it if they help you. I, I, yeah. well, the only reason you'll be able to police this is because Dan Ashworth, the person that's responsible for recruiting players and being accurate in his assessment, is so gormless that he sends it to his current employers. I mean, you can't, you can't write that sort of stuff, can you? I mean, that's wonderful. But could that this not lead to a, a Premier League probe if, if, if it well, becomes it a complaint? If they, well, listen, what it is, is designed to do is to weaponise the processes of the industry to get a maximum amount of money out of Manchester United or say to Dan Ashworth, you are staying within the confines of your contract. Dan Ashworth was a big boy when he signed a contract which gave obligations to him, to the football club that were currently employing him. And the reasons why Manchester United, despite Jim Radcliffe's sabre-rattling about what he thinks is ridiculous, yeah. can't just rock in and take um, um, Dan Ashworth, is because he has a period of obligation to Newcastle under a contract that he signed of sound body and mind. Now, what they're trying to do now is weaponise the internal nonsense that football has, which is you can't talk to one another because it doesn't happen. We all know it happens. I can, I can, I can tell you factually, some of the biggest managers in this game have sat in rooms with players that have played for other football clubs before they've even been given permission to do it. So it's gone on since time immemorial. Right? right. So the bottom line is what this argument is about is how much money, and fair play to them, how much money are Newcastle going to wring out of Man United's hands? And they're quite right to do that. Because do Absolutely you know, right. Me, this gardening leave situation is ridiculous. Ashworth has claimed that the period of leave, which runs to October 2025... Shouldn't sign the contract then, should he? ...without a resolution is excessive. He's not wrong. Well, then what'd you sign the contract for, you bleeding fool? You're the one that signed it. And this is the guy that's going to sign players on contracts. This guy signs a contract. He can read, I assume. I seem, I'm assuming he knows what he's signed for. I'm pretty damn sure when he checks his bank account, he knows what he's getting paid. So a contract says... It either says... You're signed to a contract which does not allow you to be released under any circumstances until 2025 because it's a fixed-term contract. And if you go early, there's a notice period that keeps you all the way up. Or it doesn't say that. But do and if it doesn't say that, United will go, I tell you what, <laughs> this is not an obligation that you have, Dan. But, but you don't see players being kept in gardening leave for a year. Players Owners are... don't demand that players are kept in gardening leave. 
But, but, well, it's a slightly different dynamic, isn't it? Because players are signed to a different type of contract, albeit they're both fixed-term contracts. So you can put players... What players get slung out on is into the, into the, into the reserves. So what you're telling me is when Ashworth joined Newcastle, he said, I'm delighted to be here. Listen, you know that clause about gardening leave? Take that out. Or not. Well, or not. Well, he clearly didn't, did he? Yeah, I mean, the gardening leave doesn't suit him at all. Well, so well, why then, sign it? If they wanted him that because much, he's a fool. shouldn't Ashworth have said to Newcastle, I agree with everything... I'm really looking forward because, to it, but I ain't signing that be, thing would hold me to the club. Because on a, as a you will, as you know, leave. having been around this industry for such a long time, and Thank as you. I know for having been involved in it for 10, 11 years and then sitting on the outside watching it, yeah. there's a ridiculousness that goes on, which is a sense of entitlement, which is that we can do what we want, when we want, how we want. But your contract says you can't. Well, I can do what I want when I can't. But no, no, but your contract says you can't. Yeah, but I can. Mm, no, you can't. But I can. No, you can't. You signed a contract. Why did you, if the contract was very clear, you read it, you've signed it. I know when so, he signed it. So, but why, so Jim Rackley's quite right. I mean, he, he's talking sense. One of the biggest problems we have in football is we get these guys to come into the team, they're really capable people, but they're all in gardening leave. So it takes six months, a year, or even 18 months for them to start. It's a real issue in football at the moment. But no, presumably, it's, no, it's, so Jim, it's, if you want Ashworth that much... Pay what Newcastle won. Well, there's your answer. I mean, the answer is, is basically... So Jim Radcliffe's thinking is, we're Manchester United, and we should be able to do precisely what we want, when we want, and irrespective of whatever contract Dan Ashworth has agreed, and in any industry, yeah. in any, any, any industry, including the chemical industry, which Jim Radcliffe originates from, if you have senior, senior executives in your business that will change the direction of your business or they go to a competitor, you put a lockout clause in there. It's a standard form. Now, because it's la-la land football, Jim Radcliffe is somehow suggesting that it should be different. Mm. Newcastle United did their job and the fool of a technical director signed a contract which he now doesn't like. So if he was at work at Newcastle, Newcastle said, actually, we don't feel like playing you this month. What do you mean you don't feel like paying me? Or you just don't. Or you've got a contract. You've got to pay me. What, what, well, now you've got a contract which goes the other way. You've got a notice period, you silly sod. You've got to stay with it or negotiate where you're out of it. And the way you're going to negotiate your way out of it is not send emails to your current employers prejudicing you using position so they get exasperated by it, is behaving properly and then getting Man United to pony up the money that, that, that you're apparently worth. But listen... Gardening leave. Even you indulged in it. It's not the grown-up way I to operate. I originated it, mate. I was you, the originator of it. You, you put Steve Bruce on gardening leave. I damn well did. That's just because your nose was put at joint. No, it's because what I learned very quickly was that it's a one-way transaction. If you employ a manager and they're unsuccessful, you fire them, right? You pay them, right? If you employ a manager and they're successful, they bugger off even if they've got a contract and they take all your backroom staff and your players, right? So what I said in my next contract I was going to do, which Brucey was caught by, was I tell you this is how it works, right? I've got to pay you if you leave. If you want to leave me when it doesn't suit me, you've got to give me notice. And in this instance, it's nine months. So Brucey put his little signature on that. And when he decided he fancied leaving to go and shuffle off to his little mate Sullivan at Birmingham, right, he couldn't. And so what I did was I enforced it. I said, you've got nine months' notice. And by the way, do you want to go and talk to Birmingham about that? Oh, no, you can't talk to Birmingham about that because I haven't given you permission to speak to them. Right? So in that instance, you're now stuck dealing with me. And that means you've got nine months' notice. And if you think you're going to get around it, well, then I'm going to injunct you and stick you on gardening leave. And that's where the first instance of gardening leave came on. I think Steve thought it was something to do with mowing my lawn or something. But it wasn't. It was to do with him not being able to go to work for Birmingham. <laughs> did you hold him to... I the did. entire period? No, I held him to a point where Birmingham w w would sit down and do what they should have done in the first place, which is not b be a bunch of snide and try to go and the back door and get my manager for nothing. They had to pay for it properly. Before it goes any further, if Ratcliffe, despite of what he's saying here, well, this is terrible, it takes six months to get somebody that we want out of football to go from one club to another. This is pay the football it. industry. Pay it. Pay it. Pay it. Pay it. You'll pay for a player. You'll pay for a manager. You want these guys, it's so important, they're going to change the direction of travel. You might not like it, you might feel it's unfair, but you're pinching someone else's staff. But it's going to go to arbitration. Because, the, because, the, because the, and, and the reason why Newcastle are loading their guns on it is yeah. because they know the arbitration will go, okay, then we'll give you 20 million. Sure. Right. I'd love to put you in gardening with. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.